Hello my soccer universe, long overdue review of the Iberian leagues. Barca are the new champions in La Liga for the 27th time and the Real Madrid have won the Copa, so the two giants getting the titles this year in uh, Spain. We also had the Super Copa for Barcelona, which I don't count much and maybe Real Madrid can still win a Champions League, but they've also won a Club World Cup, so basically two by two um very quickly a thought on sport uh, on portugal <laughs> sporting portugal <laughs> no portugal uh where yes the title is also uh more or less done i mean sp um it's two rounds to go four points for benfica this could be done uh coming the next round in a derby uh which sounds familiar barcelona yeah that also happened so uh could <laughs> hopefully we don't see scenes like there talk about that as well um, and we have a cup final that uh, was a was the one that we all expected but it was not as straightforward for Porto than it should have been but I want to actually take the time to uh, talk a little bit about Barcelona I mean yes uh, Real Madrid's cup triumph well deserved and I think we've talked a lot about Real Madrid um, and for once I had and I still have many misgivings the way this particular Barcelona team was constructed. I also have some uh, misgivings uh, a little bit about the playing style and you know the missing humility uh, from the side of Barca. So uh, this is all still there. However, um, it's maybe slight validation for the project where you take on a huge amount of uh, debt or restructure the debt in such a way that uh, you build a squad. You actually won a title um, and you did so by Xavi doing something that is very un Barcelona like, but it has to be commended by um, realizing I cannot play with this squad that I would like to play. I don't, will not have this open, expansive, possession based style of the Greif um, Guardiola. Uh, ilk no I have to be a little bit more pragmatic and this is a Barca team that will go down as one of the best defensive teams in Spanish league history I think the league title is a little bit shaded by the fact that in Europe Barcelona were a non-factor but what they did in Spain is they were super consistent they got the goals uh, when they needed them they had so many 1-0 big victories it was almost Italian like um, but very un-Barcelona-like. Um, that has to be commended. And probably the best player uh, this season was either take your pick between Ter Stegen and Araujo, but those are defensive players. They only conceded two goals in the league again, uh, at home at the Camp Nou. I think one was a penalty, the other one was an own goal. So that is a major, major statistic. And even uh, in their win against Espanyol to clinch the title, they conceded two goals, which is one sixth of their total goal tally. They only conceded 13 goals. Those are pretty amazing statistics. Um, and I think it's really down to consistency because when we got in the World Cup break, um, Real Madrid had soundly beaten Barcelona away from home and Real Madrid scored four of the 13 goals uh, against them. So this is another really remarkable statistic. They were resoundingly beaten at the Bernabeu then Madrid kind of tailed off a teeny bit, but uh, it was kind of a level. However, I think it was also down to Madrid having had a really crazy scale with the Club World Cup and the Champions League in between, uh, which is really, really, really hard to manage. But this is exactly the point where Barcelona them separated themselves. They kept on getting their the results because of their pragmatic approach. Uh, because they could grind out results more often, often than not. And I think Ter Stegen really saved them this title. Uh, he should be anointed a saint right there. And so uh, in that sense, I think it's an important title because it shows Xavi's growth as, as a coach that he's not wedded to a system. Maybe this is something I have never been that big of a fan of Xavi as a coach, uh, be, uh, especially about his behavior. Um, during games and so on but I'm growing uh, to respect him a lot and I think that he probably should hold on to this job and this job could be for a long time his however I think he has to, has to deliver 
And this is the one thing we have to see this in long term. Yes, short term, the one hour league title uh, with games to spare, four games to spare. So a rather impressive one. Um, the thing, again, is that it is not a memorable league title. I think of all the league titles that I've uh, seen Barcelona um, get, to me, this is the one where I'm really thinking that this was not... This This was probably the, this is the team that got the most points. It was the most consistent team. I still have my doubts that Barcelona are the best team in Spain. I still think that Real Madrid on their day will uh, run circles around this Barcelona team. And yes, Barcelona have won three Clásicos. I understand that. It still it, it doesn't feel like a speci uh, very special team. Uh, but what Xavi has done, and also managing, you know, we have Sergio Busquets uh, leaving, we had Gerard Piquet leaving. So uh, the last vestiges from the Guardiola era are gone. Now it's time to rebuild. But you have to be consistent from now on. You have to keep continuing winning the title. And more importantly, you have to continue to build kind of a global fan, uh, you know, rebuild a global uh, fan base, you have to actually go deep in Europe as as well. I heard today that maybe for Barcelona, it could have been better to make a semi-final in the Champions League for global exposure than winning this La Liga title or even winning the Europa League. Uh, because yeah, maybe, maybe they no, not as much, but you know, making a deep run in the Champions League could have made a whole lot deeper than maybe this La Liga title because, you know, um, most international audiences see your Barcelona's mostly on the international stage. So, congratulations, Barca. I will have to say something about the game a little bit lay later on. Uh, but I did not believe that you could win this title at the ahead of the, of, of the season. Uh, you proved me wrong, and for that, you fully deserve that. I think it is a deserved title, even though I'm think not sure whether this Barcelona team is the best team in the league however they are the most consistent for that they deserve the title uh it's a slightly similar story to what last time milan uh last year milan did they were not the best team in italy but they were consistent and they got on on around used the frailties of the others and i feel very very much that barcelona did the same but let's start kind of a few match reviews uh, and let's start in Portugal with the Portuguese Cup because the return leg between Porto and Family Cow was not as easy as we thought. I already mentioned it before because Family Cow took this to extra time. Porto had won the away leg 2-1. Family Cow twice took the lead, took it to extra time and then only in extra time Porto uh, could prevail and they are facing now Braga in the final in the national stadium of Portugal. And again, it's one of my favorite stadiums out there because it is so weird overall so uh portuguese cup final is there in the league uh benfica got a huge win over their bogey team braga the team that already had eliminated them in the cup rafa i mean it was all dominance by benfica however it was only a one nil win through rafa silva and that kind of seemed to be the spark that said okay yes we can win this title because uh, there was a little wobble for Benfica. Um, also want to mention the 4-0 win of uh, Sporting at, at Passos or uh, Passos, Passos or uh, whatever. I still don't know how, how that seems to go. There was, I think it was the second goal by Santos. I, I have to see, it uh, 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 was a brilliant lob over the keeper. Just go and watch the highlights of that one. Uh, and Porto then keep uh, their title hopes alive with a late 1-0 over Aruca. A pretty good Aruca team for a team that just got recently promoted. And you could see that Mefica was relieved because uh, storming to Portimonense and winning 5-1. Uh, and it was really everything, uh, every bit of 5-5-1. It was 3-1 at the half. Pedrao had pulled one back uh, to make it 1-2. But uh, Musa scoring then two later lay on to make it a really decisive scoreline. Benfica will be your new Liga Portugal champions. Uh, sporting 2-1 uh, at Maritimo. Uh, I also got to say there was an entertaining game between Braga and Santa Clara. Santa Clara being the dead last team in Port Port Portugal. Uh, with Braga having a 3-1 halftime lead. However, Santa Clara pulled it back to 3-3 in the 85th, 87th Bruma. 4-3 and then uh, a stoppage time goal makes it 5-3. So rather, rather uh, interesting stuff there. And then uh, Porto almost handed Benfica more or less the title. 
because they were down to an Evanilian own goal to Casa Pia. A Casa Pia team that's also not a bad team at, at the, this season. However, Tare, I mean, they pulled it level. That draw would have still meant that Benfica have a six point lead in the table with a superior goal difference. So, technically, already the title. However, in, uh, in uh, injury time, Danina Macho. Uh, makes it 2-1. Porto are still in the running for the title. However, it doesn't look all that great uh, as we see in the standings. Uh, they're four points behind. Uh, Braga have also more or less four-point cushion over Sporting. Um, uh, for the Europa League, Leagues, because Sporting and Braga play in uh, for the cup final so the fourth team uh, first place team will go into the Europa League this time around and then Vittoria Guimaraes and Aruka uh, go for a conference league spot um, next round could seal the title however it's a big one Sporting against Benfica and if both need the points which makes it super interesting. We have again a replay of Family Cow against Porto as well, and Braga play against Boa Vista. If Braga win that, that the devil maybe they took already the, uh, the wind out of the sails for Sporting. Um, we also want to talk about the Spanish Cup. We had the cup final between Osasuna and Real Madrid, uh, where Vinicius Junior was just unplayable in the first half, assisting already second minute the goal by Rodrigo. And at that moment, I thought that Real Madrid are going to roll over Osasuna. Osasuna really had to do it their all to kind of keep Real Madrid at bay. However, they fought back, got an equalizer through Toro, and were actually then well in that game. At that point, it seemed like, yeah, we're gonna go out all for uh, winning this cup, 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 cup title again, played in the horrible stadium in Sevilla. Uh, the atmosphere, yes, also Suna fans made it kind of special, but it's still a horrible stadium. You shouldn't play a cup final there. This stadium should be torn down and forgotten about. It will host probably World Cup games if Spain should get uh, that tour tournament. However, then Rodrigo made in 70th 2 1 and Real Madrid win the title. Uh, hold on to that one. And yeah, uh, kind of vindication for a so and so season. And you still, there's still the potential that they win the Champions League, which would make it the ultimate successful uh, season. But you know, winning a Copa del Rey and also winning um, the uh, Club World, World Cup, I think, makes it already a semi successful season for Real Madrid does not go down as a total third and you beat Barbarossa on the way to this cup title. Um, because of the cup final and now this league round was played ahead because the, the cup final took the entire weekend so we had a midweek round and so uh, they had already Osasuna Real Madrid playing before that. Osasuna going down to Barcelona of course saving everything for the cup, cup, cup final. What a, uh, a rough run for Osasuna playing Barca, playing Real Madrid in one week. Going down, er, uh, Erando being sent, sent off, and then it was an onslaught for Barca, but Osasuna really hung on and probably would have even deserved for their defensive heroics. Yes, defensive heroics, not from Barca, uh, to hang on to that. But then Alba scores very late. The winning goal, a goal that put the title. You were on the cusp of winning the title. You knew that um, it's gonna come. And it got even closer with Real Madrid, who were saving everyone. And at the moment, I think most Real Madrid fans don't want any of the first team players to play in the league. Yes, for the cup final, maybe, but save it all for the Champions League. And that's more or less what happened here. Uh, and Real Sociedad took full advantage of that, getting the two goals through Kuba and Barrenchea to make it 2-0. And that meant that Barcelona were only a win away from winning the title. Valencia got a very credible 1-1 against Villarreal, you know, Valencia in the relegation zone. This was a big shot in the arm for them. Atletico Madrid 5-1 uh, again, entertaining Atletico Madrid. We haven't heard that a whole lot uh, against the Cadiz side. It's honestly not that good. Griezmann scoring to uh, Morata, Carrasco and Molina, the other ones. Uh, but there's quite some entertaining, entertaining stuff in there. Getafe got a big win against Celta Vigo, which kind of puts them a little bit out of trouble. Um, we had Espanyol having a 2-1 halftime lead at Sevilla. Uh, a win they would have desperately needed having a campus penalty and Gaye laid on. Uh, turn the game for Sevilla, a Sevilla team that is finding their form at the right moment. Europa League, exactly that's 
what they are going going for. And then a big win for Betis to keep them alive in the run for the Champions League spot, although the Real Sociedad probably uh, enjoyed too big of an advantage there, and then Real beat Real via Dolit, so a big result in the relegation battle. And then on the past week weekend, the Real Sociedad actually a little, little bit stumbling. They had a 2 0 lead. But before the half, Girona pulled it back at 2-2 uh, and a late red card for uh, Girona. But it's a 2-2 and Girona has been one of the more entertaining teams to watch this season. Villarreal hands Athletic Club the biggest uh, loss of the season. 5-1 with Jackson scoring two uh, and I think also Baena scoring um, to really really impressive stuff kind of keeps Villarreal just about in the in the running for this uh, last Champions League spot again I think that uh, Real Sociedad will hang on to that Real Madrid get a 1-0 win over Getafe no one cares about it Asensio scores his goal the only thing is that uh, Kama Kamavinga uh, had to take be taken off with an injury and everyone goes, <gasps> Are we losing Kamavinga? Are we losing Kamavinga? Seemingly it's fine. We'll see on Wednesday whether he will play. Another big win for Valencia. And Valencia, I think, are now out of it. Klatscha, Justin Klaibert scores the first goal. Then Seferovic pulls it level for Celta. And late on, Mari gets the winner. Huge, huge, huge win for Valencia. And we'll have Valencia in La Liga the next season. Elche. Already really regular win against Atleti Atletico Madrid with more or less their only shot on goal, so kind of a, a freak result. And then another freak occurrence uh, in Valladolid's games against Sevilla. Valladolid thought they had just scored ahead of the halftime the lead. However, the referee blown the whistle a fraction of a second before the shot was taken. And you can see the referee is not even aware that there's a player wanting to take a shot. He's turned, he's turning around. And it would have been a brilliant goal. And that basically uh, disturbed, distracted, however you want to say it, Vavadoli, who ended up losing 3 0 and are now in serious trouble and might get relegated as well. Barcelona against uh, Espanol, it does not look good for es 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 Espanol. 2 4 looks uh, palatable, however, it was all Barcelona all the time. Uh, they just were five levels above. The city rivals leading 3 0 at the half, double by uh, Lewandowski and Balde also scores, also scoring well. And then it was just Barcelona trying to celebrate by playing kind of a little, a little bit like losing all defensive uh, stability. Ter Stegen was the unhappiest man on the pitch because they conceded two late goals through Puerto uh, and Jose Lu. And then uh, Barcelona players, the whistle blows, Barcelona players are celebrating. And I think they took the celebrations a little bit uh, too far. There are no Barcelona fans allowed at Esp es Espanol. And what, what, what I'm going to say now is, first, fans are should not, never, ever go on the pitch. And I completely condemn what happened there and not threaten the opposing players. This is unforgivable and there was lack security there that I just do, 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 do understand. However, under, uh, understanding the situation and Xavi said, you know, we hugged each other, blah, blah, blah. Let's go in into the um, law, locker room and celebrate there. You don't need to dance a circle around midfield in your rival stadium. This is so tone deaf and so idiotic from, from Barca players and Barca staff. Xavi had it right. You don't do that. There is, if there are fans of yours there, maybe you go to them and you celebrate with them. But you don't go in the middle, sand, in, the, in the sand, 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 sand circle. You just invite this. And yes, the brunt of the blame has to be laid on Espanol and the Espanol security staff. However, Barcelona has to also own up to that. But this is so how, uh, this shows me how detached this club is from reality, meanwhile. You have to understand this is your city rival. You don't want them to celebrate in your own stadium. Just wanting to say that. And then a big win for Real Betis. 3-1-0 over Rayo. Again, keeps them in the Champions League run, but it's probably a little bit too late for that. We have our Barca champions. Real Madrid now more or less settled on the second spot. Although I'm not sure how serious they will take, 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 take a lead, but uh, second and third is more or less cleared out. Real Sociedad and Villarreal and the Real Betis are fighting for the last spot with Real Sociedad enjoying a five-point advantage with four games to go 
should be doable. On the bottom, Valencia have only mm, minor chances to get relegated. I think the last two rounds, four, four, four points really, really got them out of trouble. And I'm actually happy to still have Valencia there. However, when, when we look now, get tougher, uh, probably through, through the nice remaining program, they are still in the relegation zone. But they look kind of that they could could get over with Cadiz and Ravad Valladolid being dangerously close. Also Almeria, it is a really really close battle. Espanyol though gone. I don't see Espanyol crawling out of that. Um, and it is what well, I just said is also what said in the uh, expected standings that it's Ravad Valladolid and Espanyol who are of danger of going down with slim chances for Cadiz and uh, Getafe. Real Sociedad will hang on to the fourth spot and Betis lost a really a potential Europa League spot uh, later on. Although, um, due to the Real Madrid Cup win, there is another Europa League spot. So we'll have to adjust the table for the next vi 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 video. So seventh Girona could get in there as well. Here the next two rounds. Uh, there's a midweek round in there as well. Um, I'm curious about Barcelona against the Real Sociedad. Real Sociedad, of course, have, to have, have had to do guard of honor. Valencia, Real Madrid, also interesting. But the big one is, of course, the Derby Sevillano. That will be a big one for sure for both of these teams. Uh, and then you see the other round as well. Um, with, um, you know, why Valladolid facing Barca is probably a big dent in their hopes of making it out of the relegation zone. That was it from me. Again, congratulations, Barcelona. Yes, I had misgivings, but you deserve the congratulations nonetheless. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel and see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.